This podcast is brought to you by GA Sports. GA Sports is home of the O'Connor Slitter, Ireland's number one hurling ball used by 311 clubs nationwide. Hello and welcome to the Backdoor Hurling Show. Um, delighted to be joined by Killadangan Man, um, who's involved with the Killadangan Senior Team, and Darry Egan, who's also involved with the Tipperary Senior Hurling Team. Um, have you got your breath back there after uh, an absolute cracker uh, last Sunday? Yeah, sure. Look, we're a good few days on now, but um, yeah, no. Look, it was uh, it was an emotional and a high octane day, so uh, we're kind of coming back down to reality now. But uh, no, look, it was great. Um, I watched the game back there Wednesday evening, and when you're when you're in the stadium at the time, you don't really appreciate what's going on. But the the quality of the game, I think, was uh, was what I really admired when I watched it back on Wednesday evening. It was top class. Uh, I suppose like with COVID, what was the celebrations like when you came back into Killadang and with your first county title? Yeah, look, sure again it's all it's all very restrictive. Like there's lots of regulations to follow. So um to be fair to the to be fair to the club committee they, they had it very well organised. We had a bit of food at half five uh, in Ballycommon and uh we got back to the hurling pitch then and people were able to socially distance outside. So we John let we, we got back to the stand and were introduced by the club committee and there was a, there was a good crowd of loads of you know loads of kids around and but it was all very um we were steeped with the weather it was all very uh you know very um up to date with so with regulation at present so uh it was great though. it was class sure bringing it bringing the cup home like that that has never never been in the parish before uh was a great you know it was a great evening to be honest and like such a fantastic game for like the character was just immense, like being hit for three goals in the first half, you could easily not show the character and it, Lockmore could have built up a score, but he, he kept going like to be hit for three sucker punches in the first half. Yeah, yeah, again, look, I suppose we, we can see that our first game of the year was against Jacob Reckons, Lockmore's next door neighbours actually, and they hit us for three goals as well, and we, we, did, we did well to dig out a draw that evening. We were, we were hot favourites for that game, but we were lucky to get a draw for a finish. Um, and similar last weekend, um, I suppose we knew, we knew the quality that was going to be coming against us, and we probably we hadn't conceded a goal in the previous four games, but we did realise that we were probably going to concede. So in fairness to the lads, they dug it out. Now we conceded, obviously, three in quick succession, which is... Which is hard to take, but I think the the second quarter was our most important quarter the whole game. Um, we just stayed in there. Uh, Sean Hayes got two points and played it very well. Uh, Billy Billy uh, hit one or two very good frees in that period, and we just we just stayed tagging along the points. Again, when I watched the back, I didn't realise the amount of shots we had in the first half. Um, I think we had seventeen shots on goal in the first twenty two or three minutes, which again. Is uh, is a test some tar lads on how they stayed going because they were up against top quality backs, but they were still getting away and getting shots away. Uh, some of them obviously not going over, but we were happy the way the way we were playing and we were trying to use the ball well. Um, but obviously disappointed in how we conceded the goals. But look, like the quality, the quality you were facing, you were always going. The likelihood was you were always going to concede a goal. So uh, just again looking back at John, the third goal, John's finish. Like there was three bodies diving in front of him, and he still tucked it in the bottom left corner. So, not everyone would be able to do that, but Tom McGrath certainly is. So, look, we just we set down away as best we could. And like, how tough was it to plan for the McGraths? Yeah, it took a fair bit of uh, a fair bit of video analysis now, and a fair bit of tactical analysis. Um, it was tough. Uh, they're just so intelligent like you can never you have to go out in the mind frame that you're going to concede to them you know not only Noel and John but like you've Tomas Kieran you know two very very Evan Sweeney like there's a full forward line of loads of brains loads of intelligence um and we just had to plan accordingly I suppose with John we we learned from their semi-final win over Nina that you just have to go toe-to-toe with him and that's what we tried to do. David Sweeney did a fine job on that. And with Noel, Noel is always going to drift back and pick up pockets of space. And more importantly, it's it's what kind of pocket of space he leaves behind him when he, when he goes back to field. That's what we were most worried about. And obviously that was evident with 
three three on the board after twenty two or three minutes. Um, a lot of it was was we were just exploited in the full back line, but that was because they were able to open up pockets of space that we weren't able to deal with. Now we did. We obviously we got better at dealing with it, but we kind of knew from the start the way it was going to pan out. We just couldn't counteract it immediately. Anyhow. Yeah, and you went one ahead then um, at the end of the second time, but no more has the equaliser, just a sensational score sent the game to extra time. Yeah, yeah, again, look, like just the intelligence, he popped it down the line. Again, what I would say is Conor McGrath, who came on, um, he got out first to the ball, and it was an unbelievable recycle pass 25 yards back into his hand. Like Conor had no, the sideline was, was a barrier for him. Uh, there was obviously he in danger of getting it cut out, but he gave a savage ball back to Noel. And while we had lads diving at Noel, like his strike off the left hand side, he he brought it in from the right post. It was an unbelievable score. Again, like the commentator on TG Carr said, similar to Joe Canning's point in 2017 when he broke Tip Hearts, but uh, it was a just top class score off the left. Yeah, and then um, Lockmore had scored you three points to two in extra time, but. I suppose I'd say your keeper is a, a hero in Kiladang and with his uh, quick thinking for the puck out and just huge character for Brian Malachley, like to get taken off and then to come back on and score like because he could have easily been angry and could have went in with the wrong attitude but to show that character coming back on and score the winning goal and what a finish as well. What a finish is right, yes. Sure, look, we all, look, the reality is we all thought it was gone when, when John nailed the 65. Um, but in fairness to Barry, it's it's probably the biggest asset of his game that's improved this year. His puck out quality was never in doubt, but um, what he did this year is he really upped the tempo of his puck outs. And the whole game, the quick puck outs were happening on both sides. So uh, it was great that Barry had the quick thinking to pick the ball and have it ready to go. Lads was saying, oh, you know, were you telling him to, to have it ready and all that? Like, that's not, that's Barry's own intuition. Of course, you're going to try to get the ball out and pray to God that the referee will allow will allow the, you know, the, the next phase of play continue. I suppose when John was standing over the 65, the referee was very adamant. It was 40 seconds left. And, um, you know, he had said that to a few of our players as John was was, was just about to hit the 65. And, and that's the way it panned out. We were just lucky that, uh, I suppose, Joe got his hand on the ball. Joe was getting his hand on the ball all day long, really. But it was just bouncing out. or you know, It was great pressure coming from behind from the Lockmore backs. Just on this occasion, he got up at the highest point and, and snapped it. And whatever way, he came, when he came down, his momentum shoved him forward. And, uh, and he had Brian running off the shoulder. Again, look, Brian, this has been spoken about the last few days. Brian is a real quality player. Uh, it didn't run for him in the first 44 or 5 minutes of the, of the normal time. But, you know, that's the way team, teams go. And not all of your six forwards are going to be on the ball continuously. Um, Brian, the lads had said it to Brian to be ready to go. They said it to all the subs to be ready to go, that anything could happen. And and Brian was the chosen one. I suppose he did very well nailing the, nailing the goal, obviously. But the two points before that were probably more important. Um, just because they kept us in the game. Yeah, and to get over the line after losing finals in 16, and obviously okay. as well. But the consensus really last year against Boris City was really that you probably didn't perform to your usual standards. No, we didn't. And uh, look again, uh, the 2016 county final, we met Thurlis at their absolute peak, and they were just way, way better than us. Um, and, and again, we had a different team. You know, we probably had an older team, and we had lads coming to the end of their senior senior careers and that but uh, against Bursley last year we didn't perform but to be fair Bursley had a like, just like we tried to have a plan last weekend for the lot more forwards Bursley had a plan for us last year and they they managed it really effectively we just could not we, it was like we were in a stranglehold for the county final last year we couldn't get out of it and that was down to Bursley's really good play and really good tactical play they were cutting off space they had their matchups very very well organised and uh, while we didn't perform, I think Bursley deserve massive credit for the way they won the county final last year. And you see, as they went on all the way to the All Ireland final, um, they got their matchups right for the Munster campaign and most of the All Ireland campaign as well. So we can't, we couldn't have any complaints. Of course, we didn't perform to our ability, but 
you have to look at the opposition as well. They they didn't let us perform really. Yeah, and you were getting ready for penalty shootout the last day, were you? Uh, well, I was. Yeah, I suppose. Again, uh, I was lucky enough. About three weeks ago, we had the senior B relegation semi final, and it went to penalties. So I kind of had that. Uh, I kind of had that experience. So the plan was that I was to take the fifth penalty, and. Um, we we thought uh, being sub goalie we thought that I could do that um you know just being sub goalie but but we heard maybe <laughs> with a few minutes to go the other day that I needed to be on the field to be a penalty taker so I had the jersey on ready to go and to be honest when when the sixty when John got to sixty five I just took off the jersey I was sick and then I threw it back on the ground but uh, look thankfully it didn't go to penalties they're mad it's a mad way to finish a game. And while while it's tough and a lot more to lose lose to the goal from Brian Malatney, uh, it would have been tough on either team to lose in the penalty shootout. And it's obviously so satisfying because like people probably looking um, at the county final don't realise your journey. Like to come from junior all the way to senior must be just so pleasing. Oh yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Uh, like I said in an interview directly after a game last Sunday, um, I do remember in the mid nineties going to going to a junior junior A game and, and playing Ross Gray's second team and we get absolutely destroyed. We we self relegated because we couldn't perform in intermediate. We were just weren't able for that level at the time. Then we didn't even win the junior A to come up intermediate. We had a good minor team in nineteen ninety eight and uh we we were up into we just you know we 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 asked could we go up intermediate at that time and um you know, we kind of slowly developed over time. That good minor team developed into a good intermediate team. We won the North Intermediate title in 2001, won the County Intermediate in 2004, the All-Ireland Intermediate in 2005, and then won our first North Senior, uh, North Tip Senior Final in 2008. So it was a slow progression over the years, and there was a big change over our players, obviously, throughout the, throughout the years. But uh, it is, look, it's a lovely pro progression, I suppose, our story is kind of obviously in the news this week, but we, you know, and it's great that we developed that much over the years, but uh, we have to remember in those times as well, like Tommy Vara won 11 or 12 county finals and, you know, Turles Arsfields won four in a row and won six or seven in total. Like there was teams that we couldn't even imagine about playing that were doing all the damage in the last 25 years in tip. And while our, our story is great, um, you know, there are other clubs who had more, so much success over them years that it's sometimes, you know, it's, I won't say it's forgotten about, but it's not, it's not overplayed as much as uh, as our story at times, you know. And like, what do you think has changed to get you competing at the senior level, like to come from junior, like what changed in the club? Yeah, like... We we got a batch of play. First of all, there was the population influx over the last twenty five years. You know, we're 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 on the outskirts of Nina, so you know there was more houses built around the parish. Number one, the schools have expanded. Um, the school line principal here at the moment is we have a hundred and maybe forty kids. Uh, the school across the way, Carrick National School, there's about two hundred and thirty kids. Uh, now a lot of kids. To Car because Carrick is very near the ring road of Nina, a lot of the kids are coming out from Nina, but we do, there definitely was a lot of housing, a lot of development and a, a big population increase. So we started to keep players, um, we started to, uh, we started to develop a, a good juvenile um, structure. And, and again, like from a board level, we, we got re we had really forward thinking chair people, we had really forward thinking juvenile committees uh, who, you know, tried to get the structures right, both from a financial point of view, from a, a development point of view, like I suppose our biggest, well, obviously the county final win last Sunday was our biggest uh, achievement on the, on the playing pitch, but our, our biggest achievement over the last 20 years is our new complex, which just opened there in February. It's a you know a massive hall, a gym, a kitchen, meeting rooms, new dressing rooms, so on. Worth about maybe six or seven hundred thousand euro, and we're we're glad to say that that's debt free, and um, and that's due to great community involvement, and I suppose as I said, forward thinking finance committees and development committees, and forward thinking chair people and that you know. So, um, you know, there's loads of good things have happened. I. I you can't really pinpoint one because we've had some great teams over the last 20 years or that. Um, 
it's 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 kind of a, a you need to look at the whole picture to to realize how far we've come really and is there somewhat of a disappointment that there's no monster club championship this year yeah yeah there is there is to be honest we'd love to be we'd love to be taking on the likes of you know Bally Gunner or the likes of Napier Sheik and Limerick, um, whoever wins in Clare this weekend, that will be a good battle. We'd love to, but but again, we knew we knew the crack with that three months ago when we even started before we started the Tip Championship that it was finished in a county final level and and that was it. Look, the reality again is we're so happy to win the county final. Uh, the Munster campaign would have been a bonus, but. Uh, I'd say after a few days, the lads are putting down now. They don't even think about hurling a <laughs> hurling a monster campaign. Uh, again, like earlier on, before we started the Tip County Championship, we played in a Pearshig in a challenge match. We played Ballyhale in a challenge match. We got you know, and it's great to go down, go to them places. We played, we played both of them away, and it's great to go to them places. They're playing, they're playing against top quality players, and while it's not massively competitive or whatever, it's it's still good to. You know, see how they operate, see what kind of level they're at, and uh, our our plan, our 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 vision now for the next few years has to be to try to retain Dan Breen first of all, and then see if we ever get to a monster campaign. Hopefully, we do over the next few years, then we can have a cut off the them kind of teams. And being involved with the club and county, how how have you found this year's calendar? Great, yeah, great. Like uh, obviously. Mid March, when schools schools closed, um, it, it all got a bit, you know, everyone. It was a bit panicky for a while. Um, but when we when we learned that there might be a bit of club action coming up, everyone, you know, really really bought into a bit of training. We did a lot of Zoom gym sessions twice a week uh, over the lockdown period. Um, the management organised some great programs. We have a very good S and C there, Parik Shrahan, who's based in Nina College. He he set up programs for lads and. Lads were just so happy to be doing a bit, um, but when the real hurling kicked off, as I said, we started with a challenge match in the Pearshig, lads were just going in for action. And look, it is great to have the, the county lads back in training. Obviously, we have four lads involved, the tip seniors and a few with the tip 20s and so on. It's great to have them around the place for club training. I'd say there's no doubt that it's going to be a split season going forward, but how the calendar pans out will remain to be seen. It's going to be a challenge because... The way the All Ireland final is now in in mid December, I'd say the start of next year, be it club or county, will have to be a small bit later just to give lads a break through maybe January and February. But uh, look, it has to be a split season. Everyone realizes that the way it panned out this summer and the way the quality went, but the way the calendar is going to pan out remains to be seen. And inter county um, a winter championship this year. Do you think that's an advantage to any team being played in winter? No, no, I honestly don't. Uh, you know, we're back training for the last 10 days there. Um, the, the big thing with this is, yes, of course, the weather's going to be colder. And yes, it's going to be, it might be wet or it might be messy. But the pitches were, that all the inter-county matches are going to be on are just top class. So whether you're playing them in the middle of July or the middle of October or November, there's not going to be a massive, massive difference. As I said, yes, it might be a bit colder and, and uh, it might be a small bit harder in the hands and stuff to get, get yourself going. But uh, no, I think I think there's so much quality in the Inter-County Senior Hurling Championship at the moment. I think the games will still be top class, be it early November, mid-November, whatever it is. I think it'll be, it'll be really, really good because the pitches are of such high quality. Yeah, and I'd say obviously with players returning and the prospect for Tipperary of playing Limerick and Clare, it must be exciting, really, because it's great to have an inter-county championship with everything going on, I suppose, in the world. Yeah, yeah. Look, again, we go back to the 12th of March, or we even go back to the 12th of April or May, nobody nobody thought to be any kind of hurt on this year. So everything is a bonus. Um, just hopefully, with the way the current figures are, it doesn't look great, but hopefully things go go ahead over the next few months, which I think they will. But um, it's it's just really it's going to be really exciting for you know even supporters, spectators watching on telly. I see yesterday all of the inter county games are going to be shown live, which is great. You know, like it's going it's going, it's going to keep households alive over the November December period, and um, we just can't wait to get going now. Really, we can't wait to get going, and it's it's good to be, it's good to be back in doing a bit. Yeah, and um, 
an extra pressure this year as um, all Ireland champions. Um, is is that something that you have to kind of approach the players and kind of get the players to deal with because it's all every, obviously everyone wants to beat you now this year as champions. Yeah, well, to be honest, I think everyone wants to be tip any year. It doesn't matter whether you're, whether you're champions or not. But no, it like it really doesn't add any extra pressure. Um, yes, of course, we're all earning champions. Yes, of course, we're going to try uh, try and win it again in 2020. But we just need to go out and be it be it Clare or Limerick on the first of November. We need to go out and have a cut off them and see how, see where it takes us. Hope we're ready for it and uh, and and just see how the season pans out. As I said, look, it's a bonus for everyone to have GA games in the winter period this year. We didn't think to be anything going on. So we're just delighted to be back training and we're delighted to to have something to look forward to heading into a Munster semi final. Yeah, and that tip management team last year, Liam Sheedy, yourself, Tommy Dorn, Owen Kelly, Liam Noshe, like what's it like to be involved with literally all tip legends? <laughs> yeah, it was, look, it's great. Uh it's it's you know, it's a big it's a big learning for me. Um you, you know, I'd have I'd have a very good relationship with all the lads, uh, and I would have seen how they operate both as a player when they were my management team, and I would have played with Owen and Tommy, obviously. So, uh, you know, it's it's great to be involved. There's loads of learning. We all have our own we all have our own uh, bits of jobs to do every night of training, and there's a good rapport. Again, look, it's so enjoyable going in. That's the main thing. Like, there's ne- it's never a chore driving over to Turles. We all love we all love heading over trying to improve ourselves as coaches and trying to improve the players uh, that's what we really strive to do every evening and, and we've a good rapport between us so uh, long may that continue hopefully we uh, hopefully we're as, as successful as we were in 2019 and um, the young man home Kelly scoring 2-5 last weekend uh, something else yeah I look sure I suppose he's just such a such a gifted hurler Um he his two goals his two goals should be shown to any young forward be be the, if they're an absolute rocket in playing corner forward or a or a, a stand up full forward the way he finished both those goals it was just unbelievable and and it's a huge win for Mullinahan they're back up now in the top grade and and uh, I know Owen is a massive part to play in that so um no it's a light seam sneak two goals uh, as one of our former teammates Conor O'Brien says the his little swivel for the for the second goal was like Shakira the movement of the hips was uh, was unbelievable to to lose his marker and he just tucked it away in the bottom left hand corner but if there was ever a video to show how to finish a goal uh, inside the 14 it's usually on Kelly and see in the video so it was great good good to see it absolutely well um, thanks a million for your time Derry and best luck for the season ahead